What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to go over this problem called Network Delay Problem on Lead Code Question. Network Delay Time. So you're given an array. In this case, it's going to be... Uh... Let me make it bigger. So you're given an array. Two, let's say, I'll show you the starting values. Two, two, one, one. And then... Two, three, one, and three, four, one. So this is your array. It's a 2D array, by the way. As you can see, the 2D, 2D. Uh, let me make this larger. Okay, so uh, let's just cross this out. Okay, so you give an array, and then you have a starting value, okay, K, which is your starting signal to send from the starting node K, uh, K, which is the starting uh, node to send your signal to, okay? So each of these values in your array represents the uh, a certain value in your graph. So the two, the first value represents the starting node. Second one rep represents the destination. And the third one represents the weight. So... If I were to draw this graph out, um, two has a no two has a uh, starting value two, and then it's gonna can it be connected to one, and it's gonna have a weight of one. No two also has a destination value of three, so I'm gonna draw two to three, and it has a weight of one also. Node 3 has a starting value of 3, right? And then it's going to have a destination value of 4. So I'm going to draw 3 to 4. And then it has a weight of 1. So the question is, given a node, given a node, starting node, K, what will if uh, what would be the time it would take to pretty much to send a signal from the starting node 2 and reach all the values in the graph? So in this case, if node 2 were to send a signal, that means that uh, it would send a signal. After one second, 1 and 3 would get the signal. 1, one and 3, right? After one second, 1 and 3 would get the signal. But that's not the end of the... Uh, not all the nodes receive the signal yet. From 3, it's going to send a signal to 4 after another second. So that this total seconds, the output from a signal from two, from node two, is going to be two seconds. Total output. Two seconds to get to all nodes. To get to all nodes. The reason why is because after one second, two would only send a signal the values to one and three. After another second, three is gonna send a signal to four. So the time it would take to get from two to all the values in the graph would be two seconds because it would be one plus one, which is two. Okay, so the output is two seconds. I already put that here, output two seconds. Okay, but what if our graph is different? You can't just add up the, the values of the distance here and I'll tell you why. Let's say I have no two. Let's say we're given a completely different graph like this. It's like a spider. Right? And they all have weights of one. Um, you cannot just add up all the weights in this graph because just if you were to add up all the weights in the graph here, you would have, it would say the output would be four seconds, but that's actually not the time it would take from, from a signal from two to get to all the nodes. It would actually just take one second. And the reason is after one second, if two were to send a signal to all its neighbors, one, three, four, and five, after one second, they would all have the, they would all have the values of the signal. They would all have the signal from to value two. They would have received it after time one second because all these weights represent the seconds that would take for 
to reach two to, to the to all of them. After one second, they, uh, two would have two would send a signal to all of these values, and that would be it. So it's not just adding up all the the nodes, all the weights in every single value here. And I'm gonna give you another thing. It's also not just getting the greatest uh, the greatest value in your in your uh, in your graph. Let's say I have two. And I point, let's say, let's say the graph is just a one link list. Let's say two, let's say it takes four seconds from two to go to one, five seconds from one to go to three, and then one second from one, <clears throat> from three to go to four. It's not just, a, if you say it's the greatest value in your graph, that would give out five, but that's not true. In order for two to reach all the values in the in this in this graph it would take a time of 4 plus 5 plus 1 which is 10 and the reason why it would take 4 plus 5 plus 1 to reach it because it would take all these uh, it would take 10 seconds from a signal from 2 to reach all the value to all the nodes in this graph See, all the nodes are two, one, three, four. It would take 10 seconds to reach it. So it's not just five. It can't, it's not just the greatest value you see in your current current uh, the location you're at. So yeah, that wouldn't work either. So you might be thinking, how do I solve this problem? Well, a way to do this is actually to use something that I have not gone over in a long time is depth first search. What we're gonna do is we are gonna record the time that it takes from distance at the node where the, so we're gonna maintain a array distance for each node, right? The earliest that arrives at the node, when we visit it, we will get the weight of that value, right? If this current weight is, uh, if this current weight is the fastest at the current node, then we have to call that first search on that node. And then after that, it would exit uh, from, from that node and then we'll pretty much <clears throat> we'll call that first search on that node and then we'll get uh, we'll be able to reach all the values in the, in the graph. Okay, and then you would maintain the distance at the node. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it in a few minutes. Uh, maybe I should code it up. Uh, okay, maybe I should actually go over how it works on paper and then I'll do it, code it up. I'm gonna get a drink of water first. All right guys, so I'm gonna explain the solution, <clears throat> the DFS solution. So what we're gonna do is we are go we're actually going to maintain a map that maps each value with its corresponding neighbors and we do this in order to look up the neighbors really quickly. So in the beginning, we're gonna create a map. So what are the neighbors of two? Two, it's one and three. So we're gonna do a map two. Uh, so we're gonna convert this array into a map. So two is gonna have a pair of one, one. Uh, it's also gonna have a value of three, one. Three is gonna have a value of four, one. So we do this in order to maintain the, to look up the neighbors faster. Okay, so that's what they do first. Then what they do is they create a distance array of size n plus one. So n is the number of nodes. We're gonna do nodes plus one. We do this because we wanna index at uh, one. So we're gonna do zero, one, two, three, four. So yeah, it's gonna be size of five because we want index at one and they set everything to infinity first okay so that's the integer underscore max okay <clears throat> so now now we're gonna set the the distance at k we're gonna set that to be zero so what is k k is a uh, k is our initial node that we're sending the signal from we're gonna start that to have value of zero. So at two, we're gonna zero. Then we're gonna keep track a variable called time. Time, we're gonna start at zero. 
And every time we run DFS, we are going to add the wait, the wait to time. And we're going to do that in order to uh, check if uh, we need to change it or not, change our distance array. So for every neighbor that we see, so first for every neighbor that we see, in this case, uh, our starting node is two, the neighbor is one and three. So we're gonna go loop through here, these values. Is my distance at one, is it greater? So my distance at one, my distance at one is if distance is greater than uh, time, our accumulator of our DFS plus uh, the weight at one. So the weight at one. So in our case, distance at one is infinity and it is greater than, than zero plus our weight. So our weight is a uh, the time it takes to get to one is one. So yeah, infinity is greater than zero plus one. So what are we gonna do? We're going to set our distance at one is gonna be zero plus one. So distance at one is gonna be equal to zero plus one, which is a one. So we're gonna change this into one. And that's gonna be the time it takes to travel to one, All right? Then we're gonna call DFS on one, so on one. Uh, this time we're going to keep uh, pass in time plus the weight that we we just went uh, went through because uh, that's to keep track of the in the case of the second case of going all the way down in the total time. So we're gonna pass in one time plus weight, which is a which is one, and we're gonna call check all the neighbors of one. Uh, there are no neighbors of one, so it stops there. We gotta check, go through three now. Okay, so now is three's, uh, is three, uh, is the distance at three greater than the time? So now, because we jump back to here, the time we're gonna start at zero now. So yeah, time zero plus uh, value of one. So yes, it is because three is infinity, which is greater than zero plus one. And that is the case. So we're gonna set our distance at three is gonna have a value of one, zero plus one. Okay. Then what are we gonna do that? We're going to run DFS on three and passing in one, uh, our time as one. Yeah, so uh, when you pass DFS at three, it's gonna go through all the values, the neighbors of three. So in this case, it's gonna be four. Is, uh, is distance at four greater than the time? Our time is gonna be one because uh, that was the time from the previous value it took from the previous to the previous node. So yeah, times one plus uh, the current, the weight of the current time that it takes from three to four, which is one. Uh, yes, it is because infinity is greater than two. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna set the distance at four is going to equal to two. So four is gonna have distance for two. And then we're gonna run DFS on four. And four has no neighbors in your map. So we're done there. And then after that, we get out of the help of the DFS helper. And then we're gonna go through all our distances in our distance array, and then we get the maximum distance. In our case is four, uh, not four, two. In our case is two. And then, uh, yeah, if if one of them if, is still in uh, infinity, well then yeah, that's that means it's not possible, but in our case, we're, we're looping from one to four. If one of them is still infinity, it's not possible, but it's not. Like one of, the, there's, it's gonna get the maximum value. So in this case, it'll be two, and then we return two. 
So yeah, that's how you that's how you do this problem. Um, I'm going to code the solution now, and I hope you guys follow along with me while I code it up. And yeah, hope you guys uh hope you guys understood this problem. All right, guys. So I'm gonna go over the solution. Uh, so first we gotta maintain the we're gonna convert our array to like pairs for each neighbors, right? Um, to do that, I'll use an ordered unordered map, and it's gonna be integer representing each node, and then the uh, I'm gonna have another unordered map. You could use pair, but I'm gonna use another unordered map. And I'll call this uh, graph. Okay, this is gonna represent each pair. So two is gonna have one one. It's also gonna have three one. Three is gonna have four one. Okay. This is just to look up the neighbors faster. So we're gonna go through every value in our array. Uh, so times at i is gonna represent each array. So you see here. One ray, two ray, three ray, right? So I'm gonna do um, so times that i zero represents the starting node. See, starting node zero. It's gonna be two. One is gonna be one. Two is gonna be one, right? This is so times that i at zero representing the starting node. I'm gonna make that my graph at times of i zero and I'm gonna make it into a pair is gonna to equal to the pair of times at i at one and times at i at two okay um, because I'm using unordered map I don't actually have to make a pair I could just set this graph at times of i one equal to the value so I'm gonna do that here uh, this is basically just pairing it up okay so times at i don't mind the weird syntax, but this is basically what it's doing. Okay, this is this is just pairing up each each uh, value with its corresponding to uh, destination and weight. That's what it's doing. So like two is going to have destination one and weight one. Uh, it's also going to have destination three, weight one, stuff like that. So that's what this is doing. Okay. Okay, so that's what we did that here. Um, then I need to create a vector. Uh, this is going to represent distance, and it's going to have n plus 1. I'm going to go through all my values of my n. I'm going to go from 1 to n, and I'm going to set distance at i is going to set to infinity. In this case, it's going to integer underscore max. Okay, so now once we got that, uh, what, I'm, what we're going to do is we're going to set distance at k, which is the starting node, is going to equal to zero. And we're also going to keep track of the time, the total time to pass in, which is going to be the total time of uh, representing uh, how much we further we have to go down. So like if I'm at three, total time, the previous is gonna be one plus the next one, right? So total time is gonna be equal, start at zero, okay? Okay, so then I'm gonna call DFS. I'm not gonna put anything yet, we'll write DFS soon, but yeah, I'm gonna call DFS, um, pass in total time and uh, yeah, passing total time in K and stuff like that. Um, then DFS, after this, I'm going to go through for I equals zero, I is less than distance, and I, uh, and I plus plus. So I'm going to start, I go to N, and if the distance, oh, I got to get the max value. So I'm going to get the, this is going to be, we have to get the max uh, network time in the end, so I'm going to call this one max time zero. 
Uh, we're gonna do uh, this max time is gonna equal the max of this each distance and max time. So this is gonna get the maximum value for the maximum distance value in our distance array. Um, if max time is equal to integer underscore max, we return negative one because that means it's not possible. That means there's still an infinity. Otherwise, we're going to return uh, max time. Uh, I'm going to make this into a ternary operator. So return max time equal integer max question mark. If they equal, then we're going to return negative one. Otherwise, we're going to return max time. So I'm going to make this. That's what this. That's what this one line statement does. Okay. So we'll get rid of that. So we got rid of that. Um, yeah. Now we have to write our DFS. So how are we going to write DFS? Um, void DFS. I gotta pass in this. No, I need to pass in my graph. So I'm gonna pass in my graph. Uh, I'm gonna call this ampersand uh, in order to. I need to pass in my distance vector. Did I pass it? Yeah, I gotta pass this in. Uh, pass this in. Did I forget? Except parentheses. Yeah. Um, what else do we have to pass in? We have to pass in the time because the time changes. Time. Um, let's see. What else do we have to pass in? Uh, oh yeah, I gotta do brackets here. Uh, da 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 da. We pass in distance. We have pass time. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. Okay. Uh, I'll see what else I have to pass in when I keep going, but hold up, let me see. Oh yeah, I also have to pass in the value that I'm starting, which is K. Uh, let's call it start, so I don't have to be... Okay, so I'm going to go through all the values of... Uh, the neighbors of graph at k, so I'm gonna do auto for every value, which is a neighbor. I'll call it for every neighbor. Add a graph at k, graph at start. So for every neighbor at graph at start, uh, we gotta check if, um, if start, Okay, wait, if, if neighbor dot first, so neighbor dot first is gonna be this value, right? The node that we're at. So if distance at neighbor dot first is greater than uh, time plus neighbor dot second. So neighbor dot first is the the destination node, right, for each neighbor, right? So if the distance at the destination node is greater than the time plus the weight that it takes to go to that node, that's what this if statement is doing, then we're going to set distance at neighbor.first is going to equal time plus neighbor.second. Then we're going to call DFS on same thing. Uh, neighbor dot first I think yeah we're gonna call the DFS on neighbor dot first okay so we're gonna pass in graph distance uh, time is gonna be time plus neighbor dot second right because we're changing time um, start is gonna be neighbor dot first yeah and I think that's it that's pretty much it um, yeah, that's it. Uh, and then we're gonna, let's run the code and see if it works. Oh, fudge, I forgot this. We gotta pass in graph. 
distance. Uh, what else did I do? Time, time. Uh, start, which is K. And it got accepted. So yeah, that's how you do the DFS version. Uh, I'm gonna go over the priority queue version now, which is a little more complicated because you have to run Dexter's algorithm. So I'll go over that now in the sheet of paper next. All right guys, we're gonna go over the same thing, but this time with Dexter's with heap. Um, so this is different, a little different. We're going to maintain a visited. It's going to have the size of one, two, three, four plus one. So it's going to be five. They're all going to have false. And we're going to have a count that represents the number of nodes that we've seen already. So that's going to be zero. Um, we are also going to have a priority queue so to do that the priority queue is going to be a min heap so it's sorted in order um also the uh we're gonna have a map that same map representing these pairs so i'm gonna do that here uh one one three one three is four one okay so that's that that's a map, and uh, let's see, we have a priority queue, I'll call the heap here, min heap is on the bottom. Put min heap on the bottom, okay? So first we're gonna push our starting value, which is k, two. So k is equal to two, we're gonna push value two, zero, into our heap. Okay? Oh yeah, we also have to have a result. Result is that value we're gonna return. Okay, while the heap is not empty and while we haven't seen all the nodes in our graph yet, uh, we're gonna pop it. So we're gonna pop this to an is, did we visit this already? We did not visit. We have not visited two yet because it's false. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep increase our count to become one. Our count is gonna become one now, yeah. And then we're gonna set it to true. So now we're gonna visit two. So two is now true. Now, um, what do we do now? Okay, so we're gonna, now, so the result, our, our result, we're gonna set that equal to the second value of our heap, heap's second value, which is zero, okay? Um, then, if, if the, if the uh, neighbors are greater than zero, so we're gonna go through every neighbor, okay? We're now we're gonna go through every neighbor. So what are the neighbors of two, one, and three? Okay, uh, so the neighbors of two is one and three. Uh, we have not visited two. Uh, so whichever one we haven't visited, we're gonna push it onto our heap. So we haven't visited one yet, so we're gonna push one. And uh, we have to push one and node second plus the previous neighbor second. So node second was this value, the result, which was, uh, yeah, zero. So we're gonna push node second plus neighbor second. So neighbor second is one plus node second was zero. So it's gonna push one, one, one. We're also gonna push three because it's a second neighbor and uh, one plus the uh, node second which is gonna be one also, so because one plus zero is gonna be one. Okay, so we do that. And now all the neighbors are done. We go back to the top of our heap. Is this empty? Uh, no, it's not empty. We're gonna pop the value of one one off of our heap. And we're going to check if it's visited. Uh, we have not visited one yet. So we increase our count to become two. And then we're going to set the value of one visit is equal to true. And our result is gonna be the second value of this. So this is gonna be result. Result is gonna be one. 
Now we're going to check if one has any neighbors. It does not. So you don't do anything there. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Um, then we come back to the top. Is it empty? Uh, no, it's not. Yeah, we haven't visited all the nodes yet. So we're gonna pop the next value, three, one. Did we visit three yet? Uh, we did not. So we're gonna increase our count by another one. So now count equals to three. And we're gonna set three to be true. Okay, so now once we set three to be true, uh, our result is now gonna equal to this value, three's value, which is one. Three's weight, which is gonna be one. Then, uh, if the neighbors is greater than zero, we're gonna go through all the neighbors of three. Uh, so the all neighbors of three is four. We're going to push four's, uh, four's value, which is going to be uh, push, push four, and then one plus the result of the previous one, which is two. Right? You guys, uh, the no, we're gonna go to four. I'm gonna add this with the previous result. Three, yeah. We push that. Uh, yeah, that's done. Now go back to the top. Um, is our count, is our heap empty? It's not empty yet. So we're gonna pop this value off, four, two, and then we're going to check if we visited already. Did we visit four? No, so we're gonna increase our count to become four, and then we're gonna set it to true. Our result is now going to equal this value, two. And then after that, we check uh, all the neighbors of two, uh, all the neighbors of four. There's none, so that's it. And then the loop ends there because now our count is now equal to four. So now, because our count equals a four, uh, we just return result, which is two. So now we return two. Okay, so that's basically how you do this problem. I basically went over the whole code. Uh, I'm gonna code it up. And then, uh, yeah, that's basically it. All right, guys, so I'm going to code this solution up. So first, uh, we're going to do int n equal to times dot size. This is just to make sure that the size is right. Uh, no, this is just for, for variable sake. Okay, I'm going to go i to up to n, i plus plus. I need to create a map, so I'm gonna do an unordered map, and it's gonna be integer. Instead, I'm gonna use a vector pair, cause like, why not? Uh, call this graph. I don't know. Okay, uh, this is gonna be a pair, so I need a pair int int. Okay. Um, now I'm gonna do graph at times at i dot push back i'm gonna push back the pair of times at i at zero uh fudge okay this is at i at zero push back one and then times at i push back two okay so after we push back those we have to create our heap um, and a visited, so I'm gonna do a visited boolean. Uh, it's gonna be a oh, oh, vector, <laughs> vector bool visited, and have n plus one. Okay. Um. Let's see what else do we have to. Do? Yeah, I did that. Uh. Oh yeah. Fine. Okay. So I gotta create a, a comparator for my heap. Um. Compare is equal to so we had to compare pair one and pair two so first pair two second and uh, we're gonna return first at zero is greater oh okay we're, we're, we're gonna make it a min heap so we're gonna be second return second dot first is less than first dot first <laughs> okay you know what I'll call this 
uh, value one. Okay, x and y. I'm sorry, I have to use x and y. Return y dot first is less than x dot first. Uh, yeah, y dot first is less than x dot first. Oh yeah, these have to be ampersands. Now we gotta create our heap or priority queue. So priority queue, it's gonna be min heap. So int uh, fudge cakes. Uh, int yeah. So it's gonna be pair pair of ints, and then it's gonna be vector pair of ints. Uh, yeah. Okay. Dex seal type. This is to convert the comparator to become the actual comparison uh, type. So now min heap comparator. Okay, so now we pass that in. Now, um, oh yeah, okay, so we gotta push min heap dot push. Okay, and then zero. And then we gotta do while, oh yeah, I gotta do a result, int result and int count equals zero. Okay, now while min heap dot si uh, is not empty. And count is not equal to n. Um, then what I'm gonna do is, uh, we gotta get the top value, so yeah okay so auto first val i don't know is it going to equal to uh min heap dot top then we're going to do pop the min heaps top value then what do we have to oh yeah okay yeah okay so then now we have to check if visited at first val dot first is equal to false we gotta increase our count to make sure we don't visit it, then we're going to do visited at first val dot first is equal to true. After that, we need to, yeah, okay, we're going to set our result and equal to first val dot second. Okay, so that gets the second pair of this, right? The actual weight. First val dot second is a weight, okay? Maybe I shouldn't call first val. I'll just call, maybe I should call top top val okay I'll call it top val top val it's less confusing top val top val then um, yeah if the count at top val is greater than zero so that means it has neighbors uh, we're gonna loop through from dictionary of no dot first okay yeah so yeah. Um, yeah, that's what you do. So we just, if um, if graph dot count of uh, top val dot second. Oh yeah, no, no. Top val dot first. If it's greater than zero, then we're gonna do. We're gonna go through every neighbor. So auto neighbor. And how do you spell neighbor? Auto neighbor, uh, yeah, auto neighbor graph at top val dot first. Okay, so we're going to, have to go through every neighbor of the first val. And then we're going to push the, if it's not visited, we'll push first and then dot second. Okay, so if not visited, top val dot first we're going to push pair of top val dot second uh, fudge, uh, top val dot first oh neighbor okay neighbor dot second neighbor dot second and then we're gonna push we're gonna push neighbor dot second Neighbor dot second plus no dot second. Okay, so result top val dot second. So plus top val dot second plus neighbor dot second. Okay, and then after the this whole thing ends, we're going to 
check if count is equal to n and if it is then we're gonna so if count is equal to end we're gonna return um, we need to return result otherwise we return otherwise we return a negative one yeah submit it let's see if it works whoops typo typo oh my god we gotta wait a few seconds something's not right priority queue and or what is right vector vector pair This is right though. Comp. Deck CL type. Deck CL type. This is right. Maybe if I call it CMP. Auto CMP. Const pair. Pair int one. X pair int why oh second Deck CL type, Deck CL type. Vector pair int int. Already Q. Pair int int vector pair int int. It should be right. Auto comp. I did it right. I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, return p1 dot p2 dot seconds less than p1. Oh my gosh! Try it again. Dex CL type comp min heap pair. Oh, wait, did I forgot a semicolon? Oh, I forgot a semicolon. Whoops, my bad. Wrong answer. What is what is the problem? Okay, really, what what is the problem actually? Uh, four two. Why is the wrong answer? Do, 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 do. Y dot second is less than X dot second should be right. Okay. Why is this wrong answer? Count is not equal to N. Count plus plus top val dot first equal the true result equals top val dot second if dictionary dot count no dot for top val dot first for auto neighbor dictionary no graph at top dot first if it's not visited top dot first oh it's neighbor my bad. Your neighbor's not visit, not top val. Okay, something's still not up. What is wrong? Visited neighbor dot first. If it's not visited neighbor dot first, we're gonna push neighbor dot second. Neighbor dot first. Whoops. Top val second neighbor dot second. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay, now it should work. 
Yeah, now it works. Okay, so yeah, that's basically the code. Uh, this comparison comparator compares the second value, so the weights of the second value, to the weights of each graph. So that's what this does. It's a min heap comparing the weights. Uh, this is pushing all the values to making each pair. That's what we did there to make it easier. This pushes uh, the k value first, the starting value, the result to count to keep track of what we're returning. Result is the one we're returning. Uh, so yeah, we we pop the first value off and then we check if it's visited already. If it's not, we increase count and then we're going to set it visited to true. Then we set our result to be the weight of the second. So the 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 sec dot second is the weight. Remember, we split each value to the weights, right? One and one. Uh, we paired these two up, V, W. So these are the weights of each cost. So result, we set it to original to the weights. If the neighbors are greater than zero, we'll go through every neighbor. We, if we haven't visited, we're going to push the neighbor and the weight plus the second. Uh, yeah. The weight that we're going to plus the actual second onto it. And yeah, that's basically how you would do it with Dexter's algorithm. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you're ready, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later.